As one of the best overtakers in the business, today I'm going to share with you my three top tips to make you more confident, more efficient and then a safer overtaker out on the racetrack. Hello, my name is David Pittard. I'm a Nürburgring champion, international racing driver and driver coach with over 20 years experience in the motorsport industry as well as all round petrol head. In today's video, I'm going to talk you through overtaking 101. I myself have built myself a reputation as one of the best overtakers in the business and I think that comes down to three key points that I'm going to share with you today. This is part of my series of my how-to series to try and make you guys better drivers, better racers out on the circuit so make sure you stay subscribed to the channel. Today I'm going to provide some commentary on one of my best karting on boards where I start at the back and come all the way through to the front. I'm going to highlight using worked examples in many different examples the three key points that I will use to progress through the field safely, confidently and efficiently that you can use in karting, cars or sim racing. So let's jump straight into the start of this karting race. Starting very much at the back of the grid of the British University Karting Championship. There was a whole host of abilities in this race. Some people had barely set foot in a cart that day and there's myself that had been karting for years. So there are some passes that look easy and some passes look hard depending on the ability of the racer ahead of me. There's pretty much carnage here in the British University Karting Championship. There was a fancy dress competition as you can see Hulk Hogan just on the left hand side and I was able to make a pretty confident and quick start to dispatch of a number of the inexperienced guys and try and make my way to the front of this first heat. It's all a bit chaotic, a bit uh, carnage in the first couple of laps here so we're not really going to touch too much on this in detail because it's so hard to plan these types of moves because literally everything is happening in an absolute instant and you kind of just have to react on instinct. So let's skip to a little bit later on in the video where things have calmed down a little bit more and I can start to talk you through my plotting and planning phase of these overtakes as I come through the field. So let's start at the beginning of lap two when the race has calmed down a little bit more and we're only overtaking one person at a time. This is where I'm going to first start talking about the three things that I think are most important to decisive overtaking, which is vision, preparation and commitment. Vision is all about looking up ahead and making sure that you can spot these opportunities far enough ahead so that you are able to then prepare for them. And once you have confirmed with your vision, there's an opportunity and prepared in the best way for it, you can then commit to that move in a safe way. So let's take our first example and using our three facts. So vision here, we can see that the car ahead in the red race suit misses the first apex. This gives me an opportunity to make a move because I know that missing the apex will lose in momentum onto the next straight. I will correctly prepare myself by nailing my apex and not following his line and then position the car in the middle of the circuit allowing me to make a fairly straightforward overtaking maneuver to the inside and because of the two facts that my vision has confirmed there's an opportunity I prepared by nailing my own line gaining a momentum I can commit to this overtaking maneuver and get to the inside and when I say commit I want to commit to taking the apex I'm not going to get halfway alongside and expect the other cart to see me I need to be in the other driver's line of sight so there's no excuse for him not to see me between where he's positioned and where the apex is on on circuit Another great example of vision is most of you will have been focusing on the overtake itself. However, you will see in the top right hand side of the picture that a cart is actually facing the wrong way. So to complete the overtake, I actually have to navigate past this spun cart to complete the maneuver. We're then straight into the next corner. And after the spun cart, there are a lot of carts going everywhere. Some going fast, some going slow that I need to try and maneuver past. I can see that the cart on the right hand side with the black race suit has been compromised because of the spinning cart. I, my vision has spotted this. I'm going to prepare myself by getting to the left hand side and carry my extra momentum past the cart in the black suit. I'm then going to commit to the corner by getting to the apex 
and being in the vision of the driver of which I'm overtaking. That gives him no choice but to surrender the corner to me and I can take the position. Moving on to the next one, coming down the hill here at Buckmore. Here I can see the competitor ahead of me has just clipped the kerb and as a result I know that it's going to push him too wide for the left-hander coming up next which will leave him vulnerable for the corner next into the right-hander. So my vision has spotted the mistake ahead of me and that there's going to be an opportunity so now I'm going to pre prepare and position myself correctly by going to the right-hand side of the competitor which allows me to open up this left-hander and I'm going to be able to carry more speed through this left-hander and get the jump on him into the right-hander. So I'm creating this run before the right-hander, before the left-hander even. So I'm, I'm planning and preparing almost two corners ahead of myself. Now I can carry the speed round the outside of the competitor and then outbreak him into the inside for the right-hander here. Uh, again, vision plays a key part in this overtake because, again, there's a compromised cart on the exit that I need to avoid as I want to complete the overtake ma overtaking manoeuvre. In contrast to the last manoeuvre, I'm going to now show you an example of why I wouldn't make a move. So coming down the hill here, I can see that I'm faster. I've gained a significant amount of time down the hill. However, my positioning for this left-hander is not optimum. I can see that the cart ahead is further to the right-hand side. Therefore, he's going to open up the radius of the next corner even more. He'll be able to carry more mid-corner speed than me. Therefore, that won't leave me in a position to overtake into the next right-hander. So therefore, even though I'm right on his bumper, you can see that he just starts to gap me on the exit of the corner. So therefore, I position myself to make the most of this right-hander coming up. So positioning more, myself more to the left-hand side. This allows me to carry a little bit more momentum than him. I use a little bit more road, again, carrying that momentum out of the corner. I'm gaining momentum on the exit of the corner, and then I can line myself up to go to the inside on the following right-hander. Again, I've because of my positioning and my vision, I have, through the sequence of corners, position myself correctly coming to the final sequence of these corners and then I position myself between him and the apex so there's again no excuse for him to not see me carry the speed through and gain the position. This is another great example of using my vision there's been some sort of hold up or two carts tripping over each other ahead of me here. In this position I'm going to take advantage of it because I am able to have a sufficient enough gap that I can carry my momentum through the sequence of corners and then make the move not into the left corner, not the right corner, but the second right corner here. So again, I've positioned myself to further to the left hand side of the cart with the red driver ahead here. And as a result, I'll be able to continue to carry my momentum past this red driver and make the move stick down the hill. Again, I've made sure that I get between him and the apex, so there's no excuse for him not to see me. My vision has spotted it, I've reacted accordingly posi and positioned myself and then committed to the move. This next manoeuvre is a great example of setting the person up ahead, multiple corners before the overtake actually takes place. So here I hold a tighter line exiting the hairpin down the hill and you can see that the driver in the black race suit is further to the left hand side. This gives me the opportunity to open up the left hander more than the cart ahead and now I'm really starting to gain. So I've started my run at the bottom of the hill here. I'm continuing my run up and over the hill here from the extra momentum that I've carried through that previous key corner and then I've carried that momentum to the inside to then make the move stick at the other side of the circuit into turn one. This manoeuvre is very similar to the first manoeuvre I showed you. You can see here that the first driver again misses his second apex. I nail my second apex, that allows me to carry the momentum. He doesn't defend. I can then position the car correctly and then commit to the overtake, get to the apex before him, get between him and the apex and then make the move stick. We now head on to the final we head on to the final lap now here. I'm just going to try to make my last positions. There's a lot of jinking and moving around ahead of me. I'm not really close enough. I haven't got a run to make a move on the guys ahead of me. So I'm just sitting back to see what I can take from it all. And in this instance, again, I'm 
positioning myself to the far right hand side as I can see the guys on the inside at the front on the left hand side of the picture are going to be compromised more than myself and the guy ahead. And in this instance, I then make the switch back to then again carry my momentum through the left hander, get to the inside of the cart on the far right hand side here. This gives me the racing line for the inside of the final corner here of which I can then carry my momentum through with track position and cross the line. So I hope this video gives you an insight into what it takes to plan and execute an overtaking manoeuvre and that you can start to apply this in your driving, racing or sim racing to get better results and be a more confident overtaker. If you do want to find out more information and more specific information, please head to my website and send me an email and we can discuss on how I can specifically help you improve your overtaking through coaching. To summarise, from all of those worked examples, I kept referring to my three principles, which are vision, preparation and commitment. Starting with vision, you need to be looking far enough down the road to spot the opportunities when they happen, to be observing other drivers to see where they're fast and slow. If you're looking five metres ahead of your car or your cart, it's almost like you're looking down on the floor. You can't see anything that's going on ahead. If you're looking 50 metres down the road, you'll be able to see when opportunities arise. Step number two is preparation. This is almost like a game of snooker. You have to think multiple corners ahead and looking at the cars ahead of you, where, what they're going to do, where they're going to be and what you can do to best take advantage of the situation that is potentially going to arise or not. In the video show there are multiple examples of where I was able to take advantage on the way into a corner or on the way out of a corner, all depending on the situation ahead of me. Point number three, probably the most important one, certainly for safety and efficiency, is commitment. When you need to make a move, at the turning point, you can't be out of that driver's field of vision. When a driver is looking to a right-hand apex, he's looking to the apex, you need to be in that field of vision so that he doesn't turn in on you and contact is made. So don't just half commit to a move where you're potentially just alongside the rear bumper of a car. You need to be a minimum of halfway along, uh, if not more, to make sure you're in that direct line of sight of the driver that you're overtaking. That way he has no excuse to turn in on you or as a result have contact. It's your corner. So that's where you have to really commit to the move. So there's my three top tips for overtaking better on circuit for karting, cars and sim racing. I hope you enjoyed this video, give it a like if you did and definitely in the comments mention any other tips that you'd like me to cover that you feel that you could benefit from. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel for plenty more how-to videos like this to come. Whilst you're here on the channel, make sure you check out this classic on board here, make sure you check out this video of the full karting race that I showed you in this video to see it from start to finish, starting from the back and coming all the way to the front, and stay subscribed up here. Until next time, bis dann.